mocked him. But what for? In what 2017, for? one of the most Oops. universally loved Hollywood stars, Terry Crews, attempted... In 2017, one of the yep, most universally loved Hollywood Lock stars, in. Terry Crews, attempted to warn us about the depraved nature of powerful executives in the industry. Not only did he share his extremely humiliating experience to a global audience, but he also tried to do the right thing and get justice legally, only for his case to be thrown out due to what seemed to be the LAPD being paid off. As if what? that wasn't bad enough, self-proclaimed macho men in the industry made fun of Terry for sharing his story, giving more of a reason for victims to remain silent. Terry Crews is like the Hulk, and I, I just couldn't get how he said that, that he didn't, like he froze like he was afraid. A, a little chubby white man grabbed your nuts, and you ain't no, do look at him. That's funny! I think it's hard for me to think that a dude with all of the muscles <laughs> can't tell an agent to not touch his ass. Is there a chance that Terry... Bro, what? Just because he's big and all that doesn't mean he doesn't, like, he, he's just the authoritative figure. Just might be gay and hasn't come out the closet yet. Because I had the same thought that you just had. Ironically, as much as these men tried to minimize Cruz, all it did was expose themselves for being a cog in the wheel of Hollywood's right. evil machine. But this was just one of the countless dark moments in Terry's career. Although the world saw him as a lovable, muscular teddy bear, deep yeah. down he was suffering from a lifetime of pain. Today we are going to deep dive into the tragic story of Terry Crews, the gentle giant who never had to build a facade to be loved. The reason Terry Crews decided to become a chiseled 250 pound beast was because he thought he would have to kill Beefed his up, man. father. A lot of my, my desire to be strong was because I knew one day I may have to kill my father. Terry Crews was the son of a violent alcoholic father and an extremely what? religious mother. Well, my early earliest memory is my father knocking my mother out. Uh, he was physically abusive, just straight up. He would, and it's wild because he didn't hit us because my mother would kill him. Right. But my mother let him hit her. It, uh, not let, I wouldn't even say let, but she would just say, she kind of took her abuse mm -hmm as par for the course. Divorce was not even considered an option because of his mother's religious views. So right. Terry had to witness this constant violence Yo, through bro. his formative years. Additionally, his mother's religion did not allow Terry to go to the movies, watch television, listen to music, or really do anything what, what that's religion secular. Is that? So he developed an incredible imagination and a knack for drawing. I started this art ability simply because I had a huge imagination and was wondering what the world was like I mean, people would tell me, you know, they went to the movies and they would describe the films and I would try to draw them out. Wow. Because I couldn't see it. Whether it was playing the flute, dancing, painting, or acting, Terry knew he was destined to be an artist. But coming okay. from Flint, Michigan, being an artist was not a realistic career. So he right. constantly felt the need to suppress his dreams. In the ninth grade, he was finally allowed to play sports. And being a larger kid, he gravitated to football. At Flint Academy High School, Terry was the backbone of their defense. Despite this, he yeah, never w. Got Terry any Cruz offers to play college ball. He did, however, receive an art excellence scholarship to attend Western Michigan University. At WMU, he decided he would give football another chance. Due to his size and natural athletic ability, he earned a spot on the team as a walk-on player. As a defensive end, Terry was named to the All-American team by the National Strength and Conditioning Association. Over his college career, Terry Cruz recovered four fumbles, which was one shy of a school record, and reported 12 tackles in a 24-12 victory over Wisconsin. His play on the field helped him earn second team all Mid-American Conference honors. Cruz helped Western Michigan win the Mid-American Conference Championship in 1988. Damn. Even though Terry still believed he was destined to be an artist, he just had no realistic way of achieving that dream. Plus, he had a chance of making the National Football League. All the way back to college when I was dating my wife, I told her we were sitting at a uh, Wendy's parking lot. We were sitting in the Wendy's. I had a little place. Right. Terry Crews cut from NFL $200 a week, sweeping floors. Rams, Packers, Chargers, Redskins, Eagles. Uh, okay. Where we sit there, and I said, look, first of all, I'm playing the NFL. 
then we're gonna move to Hollywood. We're gonna make movies. <laughs> I made that promise. You see, because I always talk. Right. And that, that's what got on everybody's nerves. Right. <laughs> okay, they was like, he talking yeah. again. Yeah. But I told her, I said, that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna play in the NFL. Then we're gonna move to Hollywood and make movies. She was like, okay, okay. And all this talk about football is reminding me that it's the best time of the year. The NFL season and no. the NBA season are underway. And my partner, no. Underdog, wants you to turn your takes into cash. Join the millions of fans that played on Underdog last year. With their pick'em game, you could win money by Yo. making picks on your favorite players. Welcome, you could man. win up to 1,000x your money just by choosing higher or lower on player stats like points, rebounds, guys, threes, uh, guys, and uh, don't do this don't do this i've lost so much money off this okay don't do it i'm of age just so you know for when you guys are of age don't use prize picks or underdog much more create entries of only nba picks don't do or it mix and match across your other favorite sports like the nfl i did win underdog a lot of money but i also lost states, a lot okay California don't and do it texas here are and never never gamble on rainbow six siege that's where that in Call of Duty is where I lost all my money. Don't do it, man. If you're gonna if you're gonna do it, do these apps, always go to sports. Okay, don't bet on esports. You will not win. They throw. They throw based off of your points. Okay, they throw. They do. I let. I literally saw it live, man. Picks for NBA opening night. New customers can pair my picks with this LeBron James free pick. All he needs is one point to win. Every NBA only entry is profit boosted on Underdog for the opening week. There's no better place to play. Sign up and deposit now using promo code. Oh, no, don't tell me, bro. To don't get tell me. $1,000 in bonus cash and a free pick. No! Underdog, the Los no! Angeles Rams drafted Terry Crews in the 11th round. As a Stop rookie it. with the LA Rams, he played in only six games that season on special teams and then sat out the rest of the 91 and 92 seasons. If you didn't know, the vast majority of NFL players don't earn those multi-million dollar paychecks, especially yep. in the 90s. Plus, if you don't make the official roster or you get hurt, you don't get paid. Right. Who's played for six different they only, teams. They only changed that like relatively recently, right? seven years like he within was constantly 10 years cut and was never able to secure that big contract i don't know anything so about football he had to use his artistic abilities to make money i would get cut from a team okay and you know i i played on six teams in seven years so that happened a lot so i would go back into the locker room and ask the players if they wanted their portraits painted after and, being cut yes because that's how i survived i was always on the end of the roster there was i was never a big superstar i was an 11th round draft pick so my whole thing is, i mean humility gets you far you know what i mean I'm, sometimes you got to make some money you got to humble yourself i do i've called you yeah. in and you know what's so cool because the big stars they'd be like man let's just i don't do play it anymore i'll get a little brother a painting you know and i'll give him some money and it was really kind of cool but the thing is i was really good it would take him about two months to complete a painting as it was done entirely by hand but he would Jeez. charge the players about five thousand dollars per piece and that was enough to pay his rent feed his wife and two daughters terry even says the reason he is bald is because he was so broke Back in 1991, I had the most beautiful flat top you could imagine. And then I went to the NFL and I was like, oh, me and my high top is so beautiful. Yeah, and then yeah. I got cut. And so I was like, oh man, barbershops cost money. And I had no money. I mean, I literally was broke. I, I just went, I'm going all out, I'm shaving it off. And I was so disappointed. Were you really? Bro, wait, first of all, you gotta talk about, I didn't know it was lumpy. I had no idea there was lumps in my head. It was now 1997. Yo, bro, imagine. Was almost 30 years old, and he knew he was never going to get the consistent NFL job. Oh bro, imagine you sit here, dude. That that used to be me, bro. I, I used to I used to like sit here and, and I had the long hair, dude. It was like down to here. If I I'll pull up a picture later. Um. But, like, I used to have long hair, bro. And if even an inch was to be cut off, bro, I would cry, dude. I was a child. But, like, I was so upset every time I had to go get it cut. Because anytime I go in there to get a haircut, they, my, my, uh, no, not a mullet. I didn't have a mullet. My, my mom and my grandma, they would have it cut super short, bro. Like, every time, bro, I, I was bawling, man. Because it made me look like Justin Bieber.
<laughs> I'll show you. I'll show you after after this. Uh, a picture of me, and then how I look like after my haircut, and you'll understand, bro. You guys will understand. Okay, it was so bad, but I do understand. I I don't think I could ever go bald. Well, like I said, I've already made. I've already made a promise that at one million subs, I will go bald. I will go bald. Just to see what it's like, and then and then watch it grow back all gray. Oh no! Over his seven-year career, Terry played in a total of 26 NFL games and secured a total of five tackles. Feeling defeated with absolutely no direction to go in, it was actually his wife who brought up that promise that he made to her back in college. She said, Let's take the girls to Hollywood and make movies. But how does a guy oh. with no money, no connections, and a family of four survive in Hollywood? Four? Well, he started by asking his former Washington Redskins teammate, Ken Harvey, for money. And I was taking these loans from my friend, continued to take, I probably took about 20, 30 loans from this guy. And he was a pro football player. He's my good friend, Ken Harvey. He's still my good friend to this day. No. And that's what's so amazing. He stopped and said, hey man, I asked him for one more loan. He said, dude, that's it. I can't do it anymore. Terry lived off his friend's money for a year and a half trying to get a job working yeah. behind the scenes of a Bro, Hollywood that production. Sucks, he man. was unsuccessful. Desperate to pay the bills, he went to a temp agency to find work where they gave him a job sweeping factory floors for $8 an hour. Sweeping floors humbled me. Mm -hmm. Like there's a breaking that you have to go through. Um, Cause there was a long time I wouldn't do that. Right. And I was like, I'm like, hey man, I, I, you know, I'm too proud for this. And and what what would everybody think if they see me sweeping a floor? Right. And my wife was like, they don't know you. After sweeping floors, Terry used his natural size no. and NFL pass to apply for security work. He landed multiple jobs in LA working security outside no, of his Hollywood studio. Terry Crews is like living the life of uh, of like what a regular person sees, like going job to job and never landing like an actual career. And and then just like really from the bottom, coming up and and being the actor he is today, dude. It, yeah, you can you can just tell in his like acting and how he does interviews and whatnot, just how humble he is, man. It, it, he really is just a giant teddy bear. That's crazy. That's crazy. Bro, Terry Crews is a W man's. In 1999, he was working outside the set during the filming of Next Friday, starring Ice Cube and Mike Epps. Terry's job on that set was to secure, aka just watch Ice Cube's car for 12 hours. And I was out there literally watching Cube's car. And you know, and there I was, I'm like, I'm in the business! <laughs> yeah. But I was so far from <laughs> yeah. anything happening. Through working security, Terry met a friend who was a location manager. Location managers basically just oversee all of the various locations of a film production, and they also hire security to secure those locations. Well, he's like, dude, we're doing this really intense movie at the jungle right now with Denzel Washington. You gotta come check it out. I came on set as a visitor. I've always realized that you just have to go. Like, if you just show up, a lot of times your opportunities are there. I was watching Denzel prepare and I was studying him and I was like, this is how an actor at the top of his game does his thing. Well, the director walks over to me, Antoine Fuqua, and he said, hey man, you wanna be in this movie? I said, yeah. I was like, sir, whatever you need me to do, it was wild. And he said, I'm gonna find ways to use you in the movie. And I was like, whatever you need. And I didn't get one dime for training day. I right. just showed up, I volunteered, I said, whatever I can do, I just want to help the movie. I want this to be the best thing ever. Oh, you mother... <laughs> okay. Terry's uncredited role in the film was yeah, so he small looks and badass. seemingly so insignificant, yet it was the reason why he got his big break in Hollywood. Training Day was a $100 million box office hit, Crazy. and it just so happened to be one of Ice Cube's favorite movies. And when Ice Cube was watching Training Day, he remembered Terry Crews as the security guard from his set two years ago. So he got Damn. in contact with Crews and asked him to audition for his next film, Friday after next. But they remembered me. So I got a chance to audition for Friday after next. And I, I remember sitting in the waiting room, me and Cat Williams, 
hoping, praying one day we would be able to, you know, be yeah, able to bro, be that's cat- crazy. And I decided we were gonna go all in. There was gonna be no holding back. If you look at the scenes with Cat Williams and I, it's almost like a intense drama. Although Friday After Next was not a box office smash, the Friday series was a cult classic loved by millions oh, of, of course. financials. Oh, of course. W Terry movies Cruz was officially in. All of what he calls Black Hollywood knew his name, his face, and he was ready to take over. I knew I was in my destiny. When I say, and this is what I'm saying, I found my destiny. It was so wild because I didn't even want money anymore. I said, I want that feeling again. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know I, you know what I mean? I, it's, it's I too, get that too. You could talk about athletes and money and all that stuff, but there's a point when I'm sure when you just catching and doing everything right, you want to you want to chase that again. Despite Terry seeming right. like he was on top of the world, Yo, bro, it's he was so still inspirational. through dark times. One Christmas that he calls the Christmas from hell, he decided to take his children and his wife back to Flint, Michigan to see his family. Fearful of his father, also known as Big T, resorting back to his old ways, Terry told him to keep his composure in front of the grandchildren. But once no. the alcohol got flowing, Big T lashed out, and he hit Terry's mom in front of the children, knocking her tooth out of place. I said, so what's going on? Uh, not, not, I said, didn't I tell you? Didn't I tell you not to act up? Didn't I tell you? CT. Bam! 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 No. Grown ass man now. I hit him, I, we, then my brother came in. Bam! his ass bro now let me tell you something this is the thing now this is what i want everybody to get i didn't feel better Mm, no i didn't feel better you never do bro it didn't work terry learned right there and then that physical violence is never going to solve his problems exactly because the thing is with all this stuff with all this you have to rise above be the better man i went down with him yeah I went to his level. This yeah. is why gang members, when you shoot back, now you just like right. everybody else. Right with him. You right, right there with him. There's a right. moment that I had to choose to rise above, but I didn't. After this incident, yeah. Terry did not return home for over a decade. He went back to Hollywood and masked his pain through his work. Cruz had not yet proved himself as a lead in Hollywood. He was only getting minor roles, but he had a drive and dedication like no other. He said yes to almost everything, which led to him filming four movies per year. Oh but the my one God! Role that earned him global superstardom was his role as Latrell in White Chicks. White yeah. Chicks is about two <laughs> fumbling FBI agents who disguise themselves as mega rich princesses to infiltrate yeah, high yeah. society, with the obvious caveat that they are black men disguising themselves as white women. That fact alone was enough to get people extremely interested in the film. Terry had met Damon Wayans through his work. Damon is related to Keenan Ivory Wayans, who is Hollywood royalty, producing comedy classics like In Living Color, Scary Movie, Don't Be a Mask Central, among others. The Wayans invited Cruz to audition for White Chicks, and Terry impressed Keenan. So much so that when he got the part as Luttrell, the comedy legend often told Cruz to basically freestyle on set. Terry never felt more comfortable as an actor and comedian, and he knew this was his time to shine. In the film, Cruz plays the role of pro basketball player Latrell Spencer, who is attracted to Tiffany, not knowing that she is actually Marcus, disguised as a woman. Santa must have come early this year, because you were first on my Christmas list. Woo, there it is right there. I want to know, are you naughty or nice? Sorry, I'm not interested. I'll take that as naughty. (laughs) Throughout the entire film, (laughs) Tiffany is trying to do whatever she can to make Luttrell disinterested, whether that be pigging out in front of him or even letting one rip, but it doesn't work. Everything she does just makes Luttrell more interested. Oopsie, I had a poopsie. Girl, we gonna get along just fine. Back at you. 
Nah, the most bro. The iconic scene from this <laughs> yeah. film that defined Terry Crews' entire career was when he picked up Tiffany to go out to eat, turned on the radio, and sang every word to A Thousand Miles by Vanessa Carlton. The most shocking part about this scene was that it was actually filmed in just one take. It only took one take because Terry actually loved this song <laughs> and knew every single word to it before ever stepping onto the movie set. Despite being hilarious in the entire film, Terry's career drastically changed from this scene alone. Slowly but surely, everything just started to change for me. People would give me my mail, like, make him a way down, down. <laughs> And they were like, do the song, do the song. White Chicks grossed over $100 million in the box office, but That's it is so widely funny, regarded though. as a cult classic. He became recognized globally and his Hollywood presence skyrocketed. From there, Cruz got a taste of the Adam Sandler stimulus Yo, package and his role in The Longest Yard, which was a film about a washed up former professional football quarterback who goes to prison and is forced to assemble oh, the a big team to play against the guards. Terry's character, Cheeseburger <laughs> Eddie, is known for being able to get any item from the McDonald's menu into their prison. I knew you couldn't resist my sh I got the shakes that'll make you quake. I got the fries that'll cross your eyes. I got the burgers that'll... Just he also did one of the cleanest robot dances you will ever see. Terry continued to steamroll Yo, through the I love that movie. Securing the role as the president in Idiocracy. Idiocracy was written and directed by the legendary Mike Judge, who thought Terry was an absolute perfect fit for President Camacho, a former professional wrestler and also prawn star. I know shit bad right now, with all that starving bullshit and the dust storms, and we running out of french fries and burrito coverings. Yeah. But I got a solution. That's what you said last time, dipshit. Ironically, President Camacho <laughs> would have a decent chance at winning the actual presidential election today. But it was again a connection oh that Terry Crews made on set that would get him another career defining role, which was portraying Chris Rock's father on the TV sitcom Everybody Hates Chris. Bro, I, I remember this. I want you to play my dad. Because he saw me and my wife and my two kids out there on, in Santa Fe, New Mexico, when we was filming Longest Yard, he was watching. And that's the thing another people, you gotta remember, everybody is watching, everybody is watching. And so then I played Chris's dad, and everybody hate Chris for four years straight. This man, when I look at my life, man, I just think, I just thank God for every, every opportunity. Everybody Yo, Hates bro, that's Chris what I'm saying, is an man. extremely highly rated sitcom, achieving a near perfect oh, I score love this from show. both fans and critics. Dude, I love this show growing up, man. Uh, I don't even know, like, what it was, but it's just, like, every time it would come on, uh, I would just sit here and just be, uh, just sitting there glued to the TV watching it, bro. Like, every single time it came on, bro. I, I love this show. And although it is a comedy, it is primarily about adolescence and family life in inner city poverty. The determined struggles of decent parents trying to provide a better life and values yeah. for their family. Which made Terry the perfect candidate for the role as that kind of explains his real life. Cruz's character Julius was loved for his insane levels of frugality. I know you're not going to throw that away. Eat that. That's 30 cent worth of oatmeal. Unplug hmm. that clock, boy. You can't tell time when you sleep. It's two cents an hour. <laughs> Throughout his career, Terry constantly broke the trope that muscular African-Americans had to be portrayed as tough gangsters. <laughs> Muscles aren't funny was a common thought in the industry, and Terry knew he could break that barrier. He didn't need to pretend to be something he wasn't for the approval of Hollywood. He didn't have to build some facade and maintain it so he could get consistent work. He always remained himself, and that's why fans loved him. Terry Crews is a giant muscular yeah, teddy yeah. that deserves to be loved and appreciated. Oh, After his hard work through the 2000s, Terry Crews was officially an A-list superstar, but his dark past that he hid from his wife was at its tipping point. Not the money, the fame, nor the acceptance from the world could distract him from the secret he was hiding from his family. And on his darkest day to what he now calls D-Day, is when he had to admit to his wife that he had cheated on her. Years go by, and but my wife was always suspicious, like, you know, 
what it, what's up with you, Terry? And I'm like, I'm good, I'm good. And I remember starting arguments. So she would stop talking. You forget, you start to forget which lie you told. You know, things start to conflate and what makes you like, oh, mixing man. up. And, and the pornography never stopped. It would, it would be at a low, but I, I, you know, I'd go like a month and be like, oh wow, I'm good. And then uh, uh, February, 2010, she was like, what is it I don't know about you, Terry Crews? And I'm like, what she had to complain about? You know, it's, it's a good lie, you know? And the question I would ask her, and I would literally ask myself, was like, why doesn't she believe me? When the question I should have been asking is why am I lying? You know? Right. And I had blamed her for not believing me. That's <laughs> that's how deep it goes. Bro, I'm that's, you, that's crazy. Success is the warmest place to hide. You get a lot of psychophants. You get a lot of people telling me, oh, telling you, you're right, you're right. I had tons of people like, man, you good. In comparison to everybody else, oh my God, you never hit your wife. You never, you, you, you bring the money home, you do all this stuff. But I was not real. I was a lie. I was living a lie. Yeah. And when I told my oh, wife, bro. I heard this gasp on the other end. And I was like, oh boy. I think it's over. And she said, you know, I'm done. She said, I don't know who you are. I have no idea. Because see, to me, it happened 10 years ago. But to her, it happened today. Yes, yeah, because Hollywood, that's when she found out. general, would have listened to their ego. They would have convinced themselves that their infidelity was no big deal. And it's menial compared to but what just, other... But this just goes to show, like, how humble that Terry Crews is, man. Like, yeah, he did wait 10 years to speak about it. But, I mean, like, it's not an easy thing to discuss, you know? That's not easy at all. Men do. Breaking Additionally, a Hollywood star like Terry Crews would probably have left their wife and just married exactly. some 21-year-old. But then, how would his kids view him? You see, Terry exactly. Crews was trying to be the role model that his father never was. He also loved his wife and cherished her loyalty. Which, which is an insane bar to, like, sit at. Like, sitting here telling yourself that you're never going to end up like your father it is, like... When when you like you were raised that way, right? You are raised in that like trauma kicks up and whatnot. Like uh, it's just it, you just have to be the better person. And and the reason why he he discusses a well, I don't, I don't know exactly what he's thinking, but the reason why it's like it's so deep rooted that he's like uh, he he crossed that boundary that he that he uh, set for himself to never cross in in his adolescent years to him she stuck it by sucks, him man. when he was nothing yeah. she believed in him and he knew that was something he could not just let go they spent years repairing their relationship but today they use their story as a way to help other couples revive their relationships so now this is what you have to do and i was totally prepared to live the rest of my life by myself. Because knowing what I'd done, I was like, would I forgive me? See, that was the big thing. Like, would I forgive me? And you know what the answer was? No. No. Yeah. But she did. Many people praise Terry no, for opening big. up about his vulnerabilities. He says he constantly receives emails and messages from people that he has inspired to get help for their addictions, or dive deeper into their faith to find answers for their darkness. However, not everyone thought him being vulnerable was honorable. Some of them thought it was funny. More specifically, no, how do you think something like that's funny, bro? Assaulted, guys like 50 Cent, Nick Cannon, and others publicly mocked him. On October 10th, 2017, Terry tweeted, this whole thing with Harvey Weinstein is giving me PTSD. Why? Because this kind of thing happened to me. My wife and I were at a Hollywood function last year and a high-level Hollywood executive came over to me and groped my privates. Jumping back, I said, what are you doing? My wife saw everything and we looked at him like he was crazy. He just grinned like a jerk. What a creep, the alleged perpetrator bro. was Adam Vennett, who was the head of motion pictures for Morris Endeavor Entertainment, an American holding company for talent and media agencies with a net worth of around $6.9 billion, man. servicing A-list 
A-list clients like Jake Gyllenhaal, Christian Bale, Hugh Jackman, Denzel Washington, and even Elvis Presley. Based on the casual nature of Terry's tweet, it was kind of hard to take him seriously. Then when he went on national news to tell his story, they realized this was no joke. Back in February 2016, I was assaulted by Adam Bennett, who is the head of the motion picture department at William Morris Endeavor, one of the biggest yeah. agencies in the world. He's connected to you know probably everyone I know in the business. I did not know this man. So you did not know him before this? I man. have never had a conversation with him, ever. I literally, I'm looking at him and he's basically staring at me and he's sticking his tongue out and you know, uh. overt, just overtly sexual kind of uh, tongue moves. And I'm sitting there like, it's a party, it's packed, the whole thing. And I'm looking like, is this a joke? I mean, I don't, I don't understand. It was actually so bizarre. And he keeps coming over to me. He comes over to me, I stick my hand out and he literally takes his hand and puts it and squeezes my genitals. And I, I jump back like, hey, hey. And, and he's like, and he's still licking his tongue out and all this Ew, stuff. Like, bro. What are you doing? What are you doing? And then he comes back again and he just won't stop. And I, 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 then I really got forceful, pushed him back. He bumps into all the other party goers, the whole thing, and he starts giggling and laughing. And let me tell you, Mike, I have never felt more emasculated, more objectified. So you didn't think anybody would believe you if you came forward? Last year? No, no. Actually, I let it go. Actually, I put it in the back of my head, and I understood why women everywhere had to let it go. But let me tell you, when the Weinstein thing started happening, I got PTSD. I was going, oh my God, this exact thing happened to me. Shortly after Terry reported this, he got a call from Adam Bennett himself. I get a call. Here, it's him on the line. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I'm sorry. I was drunk. I wasn't myself that night. And I said, hey, man, you got to understand the depth of what you did in front of my wife. I said, man, you don't even know how close you got to, to really being hurt. And I said, you need some help. I said, you need to go get help. And he was like, yeah, OK. Oh, OK, bro. Was it sincere? Did you feel like it was sincere? No, no. It's like when people are sorry because they got caught. After telling yeah. his story to the world, Terry then decided to file a police report with the LAPD about the incident. Cruz first talked publicly about this last month. People have to be held accountable. We're going to go all the way. Determined to get justice, Cruz filed a lawsuit against Adam Bennett. Russell Simmons, a record executive who has never done any business with Terry Cruz in his life, emailed Terry asking him if he would give the agent a pass. But Terry remained What? Firm. Nobody gets a pass. I ignored it. When he, he emailed me at first, I ignored it. And then all of a sudden, he's like, I got zero tolerance for this thing. I'm like, wait a minute. You say you got zero tolerance, but you told me to get a dude pass when the dude did it to me. I said, that's because abusers protect abusers. This culture protects it. They, they protect each other like that. Terry even told his story in front of the Senate. Yeah. My name is Terry Crews. But I didn't I'm hear about any of this. This is crazy. Author, former athlete, advocate, and a survivor of a sexual assault. This past year, we have seen powerful men in Hollywood and elsewhere finally held accountable for sexual harassment and assault. We also saw the backlash survivors faced after coming forward. Yeah. It's sad that people say, we need to care more about men who are essayed too. But when men speak up about it, they, yeah, they get made fun, of. made fun of and ridiculed. ridiculed. The people oh. who should be ridiculed are the gross assailants, not the victims. Since this was at the heart of the Me Too movement, where most people speaking out were called opportunist and liars, many yeah, raised the argument yeah, that- It is kind of unfortunate that all that like came, came to be, um, out during the Me Too movement, which everyone was kind of like fed up with because it was just like every single day there was a new story that you didn't know was true or just made up uh, to like have someone else try and, and get a bag off of it. And that's that's what I hate the most about that whole that whole ordeal is um, yeah, I think I think it's a very powerful movement, but like the whole the whole other side to the coin is, is so awful for people that are like getting falsely accused when they didn't do anything and and it's just like a big group of people that are all saying me too stacking on top of it, it it's just it's just a shame man 
it's a shame what people will do for to to satisfy their greed and nobody could possibly assault a 250 pound muscular beast like terry oh Cruz, you definitely can essentially proposing the idea that he was lying or doing this for attention 50 cent was one of the many who ridiculed him on instagram uh, he posted an image of a shirtless terry Crews with the words i got r-worded my wife just watched it also featured a second yo bro 50 a... bro 50 cent man Fifty, bro. <laughs> bro, how how does he come up with this? How did he come up with this shit? <laughs> bro, nah, man, come on, uh, come on, fifty, come on, fifty suit with a rose in his mouth with the words gym time in the caption he wrote lol what the f is going on here man terry i froze in fear they would have had to take me to jail get the, get the strap, strap. Bro, get the strap. In comments in an interview with larry king terry cruz is like the hulk this guy's like huge and he uh when he gets into a scenario starts to explain the scenario because he was speaking to the senate and he, and the lady asked him well you didn't do anything you didn't like push him off or no that'd be hot chocolate and I, I just couldn't get how he said that he didn't like he froze like he was afraid and terry was approached and asked well, no it's just like it, it's just like a sudden sudden thing like someone grabs his genitals yeah he's just gonna be like shocked right like dude who does that who just runs up to someone and just gropes them bro like of course you're just gonna freeze and be like what the hell just happened to me what the hell is going on and, and yeah, it would make him freeze. I'm sure, I'm sure, like, uh, 50, it, had he been in the same scenario, he would have just been, like, stunned. Like, what the hell is going on here? Like, he, he doesn't know because he wasn't in that position, right? Not that I, you know, know, but I'm just trying to speak up, like, hypotheticals. Comments, he took the high road. Today, uh, 50 Cent took a shot at you on, on one of his posts, um, saying that he, no, saying with how big you are, how could, the, you know, how could this have happened to you? Yeah. And, you know, he said if, if it had happened to him, he would have grabbed this strap. Well, I love 50 Cent. I listen to his music while I'm working out. Hey, that's the deal. Who? Amanda, the stairs. I love it. Anything about, about how big you are? Is that, is that something that, is that a fair comment by him? Well, first of all, I proved that size doesn't matter when it comes to sexual assault. But that didn't stop the conversation yeah. around Terry. In fact, it just poured more gas on the fire. Some people even started to ponder if Terry was gay and that maybe he liked it. Is there a chance that Terry just might be gay and hasn't come out the closet yet? Let me tell you something. When I saw that today, right, if with me for a split second, because I had the same thought. What? That you just had. When, when you're from the street, and now Terry Crews from Flint. He from Flint, Michigan. I don't know nobody else. Some of the coldest gangsters I know come out of Flint, Michigan. So, what the fuck he was trying to prove with the yeah, purse what is it? and the boots? I don't get it because it doesn't prove anything. And to the LBGTQ, to the Terry Cruises of the world, listen, we're not here to bash nobody. Some what? things are just a misconstrued. And don't forget, we are entitled to our opinions also. More of Terry's peers chimed in, like comedian DL. Yo, Hewitt. bro, guys, just stay out of his business, man. I, I think it's hard for me to think that a dude with all those muscles <laughs> can't tell an agent to not touch his ass. His ass or his ass? Whatever. Whatever he touched. I just do. I, I, don't, I don't understand. I think that now everybody's so into this notion that me t it happened to me too. Hey, mother God gave you muscles so you could say no. Presumably fed okay, up for being bro. mocked and ridiculed for over a year, Terry kind of snapped at DL, and the way he responded just caused even more controversy. He got into a back and forth with DL Hewley on Twitter where DL suggested that he should have slapped the executive for groping him, to which Terry replied, so sir, if you truly feel that is a correct way to deal with toxic behavior, should I slap the shit out of you? This tweet absolutely exploded with 227,000 likes, but they were just in it for the drama. Many right. others felt like Terry crossed a line. So let me get this straight. He want to slap the black man for commenting on his situation, but he does nothing 
to the white man who created the situation. Oh my god. No no way, bro. Him in front of his wife. Nick Cannon jumped in on the conversation. While he said he respects the way Terry handled the situation, he doesn't think that absolves him from being joked on. A little chubby white man grabbed your nuts and you ain't do sh That's funny. You a big ass mother. We gonna joke about that. Right. You come on wildin' out, we took, it's gonna be nut grabbing jokes. Yo, no one's showing up on wildin' out, bro. It Quit promoting it. In the public. No one's showing up on that. It's not, we can joke about this. There's no hate involved in this, but that that's how you get over that humor heals. Like right, let's but, talk about it. So he can't. I don't agree with him jumping out there and 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 you know badgering all of these other people who are just talking. That's about a story, it. though. Like, they, yeah, Jimmy Kimmel, Jimmy Fallon, all they made jokes about it too. Why are you not getting crazy with them? Right? Nobody seemed to acknowledge that if Terry Crews beat the snot out of this guy, he would be labeled as the crazy black guy who overreacted and beat up the innocent white executive who was just playing a little joke. Unfortunately, Terry's lawsuit never got to see a trial, and a settlement was reached between Venet and Cruz, yeah. meaning Terry did get some sort of payout. Venet denied the allegations in court documents, claiming his actions towards Cruz were not sexual and caused no harm. However, Cruz claims that the case was thrown out because Venet was in the LAPD's pockets. He tweeted, Adam Venet has been the event chairman of the LAPD Foundation, which raises millions for the LAPD. Anyone wonder why my assault case against him was thrown out by the DA? Yeah, hashtag me too. Terry risked his career to try to expose the yeah. dark reality of a Hollywood executive, and for that, he was mocked and ridiculed by his peers. Some of them will never work with Terry because of this, but it doesn't really seem like it impacted his ability to get work. Brooklyn Nine-Nine, Terminator yeah. Salvation, The Expendables 1, 2, and 3, Bridesmaids, Bro, it should Development, The Ridiculous Six, Sorry to Bother You, Deadpool 2, Hosting America's Got Talent, and even becoming the most iconic Old Spice spokesman yeah, in history. Yeah. It's safe to say that standing up for what was right paid off in the end. Oh, of course. All of Terry's decisions, even if deemed controversial, were done in the spirit of being the man his father never was. Terry is redefining masculinity, constantly asking himself, what is the right thing to do as a husband and as a father? And despite all the pain, torment, and abuse his father put onto him, he forgave him, and they made amends. And I got with my father, Dude, and that's... I forgave him. I learned, I said, you know what? My wife taught me forgiveness. I need to forgive you. And I, I'll never forget these words. I said, you know what? I've been waiting on you to say you're sorry. You know what? I am going to say right now, that you, if I could choose my parents, I choose you because I came through you. I'm not from you. I came through you. Yeah. You didn't come from your parents. You came through them. So you do not have to take the stuff that they have. You can choose what to take. You can choose the good or choose the bad. You don't have to settle for, well, this is what we did. This is how we are. Yo, bro. So I told him that, and he broke down. He broke down, and I gave him the hug mm -hmm. of a lifetime. And this hug lasted, I, I, it's, I swear it felt like it lasted 10 minutes. And he cried, and he cried, and he broke down. And he said, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for what I did. Yo, to bro, myself. Terry, man. <laughs> he said, I'm sorry. Got me all emotional and you, shit. And your brother and your sister and your mother. That's what I was waiting on. And it made me free. It made me free. Bro. Once no! The no! Of Bro, dude. Man. That's crazy, bro. Yo, W. Terry Crews, man. It is, a, it is like an extreme case of uh, just inspiration. Inspirational man. Uh, seeing seeing his life, how he grew up, uh, and and just all that, bro. Dude, the W video, Patrick, man. God, bro. God. 